Evelyn wanted to learn about her past more than anything else in the world. The woman grew up in an orphanage and didn't remember her parents. Some of the caregivers said that she was found at the railway station when she was three years old. She didn't have any documents or personal items on her that could help her find her family. The only thing that seemed of interest to the police was a pendant in the shape of a miniature silver key that was hanging around the girl's neck. Despite the fact that the police went around every jewelry store in Chicago, the pendant couldn't help them find Evelyn's parents. No one knew when and why the girl ended up at the station. Some of the caregivers suggested that Evelyn's parents might have had an alcohol abuse problem and thus couldn't take care of their daughter. So they could have simply taken her to the station and deliberately left her there. This theory seemed quite plausible and so Evelyn had long accepted it as the truth. Growing up at the orphanage was anything but easy. Nevertheless, the girl never despaired and believed that one day her life would take a turn for the better. Some of the kids got taken into foster care, which gave them hope that they would eventually get adopted. Unfortunately, Evelyn never got a new family and lived at the orphanage until she came of age. I guess no one wants me, the woman thought sadly, leaving the walls of the institution that had become her home. Fortunately, Evelyn managed to find a job rather quickly. Being a simple and sociable young woman, she got a job as a cleaning lady at a trading company that was hiring at the time. Evelyn enjoyed her work, even though it wasn't easy. The woman felt rather confident in the realm of mops, rags, and detergents. This was partly due to her love for cleanliness, which the orphanage caregivers instilled in their students from early childhood. The director of the firm was a man named Alfred Morrison. As an experienced and far-sighted leader, he appreciated his employees and was always nice to them. Ever since they met, Evelyn felt deep respect for this intelligent and reasonable man with sad, gray eyes. Of course, they rarely cross paths, since Mr. Morrison spent most of his time on the road going on various business trips, always working to get new deals for the firm. When the director was away, the deputy director was in charge, and he was the complete opposite of his boss. George Brown liked to reprimand his employees, and always managed to find problems where there weren't any. Having quickly realized what kind of man he was, Evelyn did her best not to cross paths with the grumpy boss, who behaved like he was the center of the universe. But that morning, everything went wrong. Because of the pouring rain, the floor in the lobby had to be wiped virtually non-stop. Evelyn was just about to go change the water in the bucket when the door opened and George Brown appeared in the lobby. The man looked down at his feet and his face immediately showed displeasure. Why is the lobby so dirty? Can't you just wipe the floor with one of your rags? The deputy director asked, raising his voice. I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. I'll get it cleaned. Evelyn started to fuss about, hoping to avoid conflict, but there was no stopping George. He was in a bad mood and thus needed to take his anger out on someone, and the unfortunate cleaning lady seemed to be the perfect option. George got so caught up in his emotions that he didn't even realize when he crossed the line and brought the poor cleaning lady to tears. Meanwhile, Evelyn desperately tried to smooth out the situation and prevent the conflict from developing further. At that moment, a quiet but confident voice rang out behind the man. Mr. Brown, what's going on here? Why do you allow yourself to treat your subordinates like this? George turned around and saw Alfred Morrison standing in front of him. Apparently, the director returned from his business trip a bit sooner than expected. Excuse me, sir. I just wanted to make sure that everything was in perfect order. But this cleaner... George tried to justify himself, but stopped mid-sentence. Don't you dare talk about Evelyn in that tone. She's an employee at this firm just like you are. Alfred Morrison snapped at the deputy and went into his office. At that moment, Evelyn plucked up her courage and said quietly, Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you standing up for me. The director looked at the cleaning lady and smiled slightly. The man was about to leave when he suddenly saw a strange shiny thing around the woman's neck. Alfred's heart skipped a beat, and tears filled his eyes. There was a small silver pendant shaped like a key hanging on Evelyn's neck. It looked like something out of a fairy tale. Apparently, it got out from under her uniform and now sparkled in the light of the fluorescent lamps. 
the director took a closer look and realized that it was the same pendant. Is something wrong, sir? Evelyn asked in surprise. Alfred turned pale and started sweating profusely. Excuse me, but where did you get this pendant? The director asked, stammering at every word. Evelyn breathed a sigh of relief and replied, I don't know, sir. I've had this pendant since I was little. The caretakers at the orphanage said that I had it on me when I was found at the Chicago station. Alfred Morrison turned even paler and taking a step back, whispered, No, <laughs> that's impossible. The man seemed to have frozen, but his mind was racing, taking him on a trip down memory lane. Alfred Morrison was surrounded by his parents' love and care from an early age. The boy did well at school, and by the time he graduated, he had every chance to continue his studies at one of the best universities. Alfred was always good at mathematics and exact sciences, and therefore dreamed of getting an economics degree and becoming a businessman. Having been admitted to the university of his choice, the talented young man became the real star of his year in just a couple of months. Time went on. Studying was easy for Alfred, which allowed him to play in the quarterback position of the university football team without any harm to his grades. It was then that he met a beautiful young woman named Gina, who was on the cheerleading squad. The relationship between Gina and Alfred developed so quickly that they seemed to haven't even realized that they plunged headlong into a whirlpool of love and passion. Spending more and more time together, the young people realized that they could no longer live without each other. About six months after they met, Alfred and Gina got married, but they did it more out of necessity than by choice. They had to rush into marriage because Gina was already pregnant, which made her the happiest woman on earth. Since Alfred had already gotten his economics degree by that time, he didn't have a problem finding a job. The only thing that interfered with the newlywed's happiness was the fact that Gina suffered from morning sickness and dizziness throughout the entire pregnancy. Nevertheless, the labor was almost painless, and contrary to the fear of the doctors, the young mother gave birth to a beautiful and healthy baby girl. She's so beautiful. She's got a mole above her upper lip. That's a good sign. She'll have a happy life, the nurses whispered among themselves. The couple named their daughter Evelyn after Gina's late grandmother. The baby was a calm and obedient child from the first days of her life. She rarely gave her parents trouble and even slept throughout the night. On his daughter's first birthday, Alfred gave her a rather peculiar gift, a silver pendant in the shape of a small key. This is the key to my heart, dear, the young father said with a smile and put it on his daughter's neck. At that moment, the happy parents believed that their life would be full of happiness and that nothing in the world could ruin it. But everything changed one warm June day when Alfred decided to take his three-year-old daughter to Chicago. The man decided to take the train so that the trip would be more comfortable for his little girl. Evelyn spent the entire journey glued to the window. The girl took in the beautiful landscapes of the endless plains of Illinois. That day, Gina fell ill and couldn't travel with her husband and daughter. If she could only have known that in the very near future, she would regret her decision very much. But there was no turning back. At one point in their journey, three shady young men entered the train at one of the small stations. They weren't traveling, but were rather looking for something to steal so they could continue living their lives as they pleased. Since Alfred was well-dressed and looked wealthy, the three thugs immediately singled him out from the rest of the passengers. Unfortunately, the young robbers didn't care about the fact that the wealthy man was traveling with his three-year-old daughter. Having waited for Alfred to step out of the car, the three men followed him and jumped him. Alfred might have been able to fight off the attack if there weren't so many muggers, but fighting against three men at the same time was too much for him. Meanwhile, little Evelyn was sitting in the car unaware that her father had just been mugged and thrown off the train at full speed. It was only upon arrival in Chicago that it became clear that the girl's father had disappeared. Thus, the little girl ended up alone at the train station of the metropolis. The poor child was scared and didn't know what to do. At some point, an untidy-looking woman approached the girl 
and was already trying to get the child to go with her. Fortunately, there were police officers nearby. He noticed that the well-dressed little girl didn't look like she belonged with the homeless woman. Thus, Evelyn was taken to the police station and then to the Chicago orphanage. The girl couldn't have known that her father had suffered a brain injury and was fighting for his life in the ICU at that very moment. The worst part was that no one could explain what had happened. It took Gina three days to find her husband at the hospital. However, the man fell into a coma and thus couldn't tell anything about what had happened to him. Meanwhile, Gina was most worried about her daughter, who seemed to have disappeared without a trace. The police never managed to find any leads that could have helped them find Evelyn at one of the orphanages in Chicago, and the girl was too young to provide any real information about herself. She only knew her name, which was why the caregivers at the orphanage started calling her Evelyn. It was only six months later that Alfred woke up from his coma and finally told what had happened to him. By this time, the muggers had already been caught, but even they couldn't shed light on the mystery of the girl's disappearance. Time went on. Alfred finally recovered from his injuries, but he still couldn't find his daughter. Due to her health problems, Gina couldn't have any more children, which further upset the woman, devastated by the loss of her only daughter. At first, the couple did everything they could to find Evelyn, but eventually they resigned to their fate and tried to live on, directing all their energy at developing their business. Thus, by the age of 48, the couple already had their own company, which brought them a stable income. Alfred's entire life story flashed through his mind in an instant. The man stood there and looking at the cleaning lady who had his daughter's pendant around her neck. Dear God, and her name is also Evelyn, and she has that mole above her upper lip. How did I not see it before? Flashed through the businessman's head. Alfred's parental instinct told him that the young woman standing in front of him was indeed his missing daughter. Taking Evelyn by the hand, the man led her into his office and told her everything he knew and kept to himself all those long years. To say that Evelyn was surprised would be a huge understatement. What if it's just a mistake? A coincidence? Things like that happen in life, the young woman whispered. Alfred only smiled and shook his head in response. Of course, they did a DNA test to get a distinctive answer to their question, but the businessman was 100% sure that Evelyn was his daughter who disappeared many years ago. When Gina's husband told her that he found Evelyn, her joy knew no bounds. The long-awaited reunion of mother and daughter turned out to be very emotional. It was impossible to look at them without crying. Now, Evelyn was back with her family. The businessman was going to make sure that nothing bad ever happened to her again and that she always had everything she needed. Only family and the closest friends can help and support a person in the most difficult moments of their life. A week later, Alfred Morrison fired his deputy director and appointed Evelyn to this position. The woman clearly had her father's mindset and quickly got up to speed. Looking at her, the employees of the company were sure that the firm was in good hands and were happy to have gotten rid of the awful George. Meanwhile, Evelyn could finally enjoy her life, spending all of her free time with her parents, whom she had previously only seen in her dreams.